have been asked what varieties of tomato we are growing and uh, I'm not going to answer this these are the varieties I'm growing this year Pomerado, uh, tomato pantano which I saw in Italy and I have a video about it it's a kind of greenish uh, uh, to pink red tomato this is a sun gold f1 this is an import from Japan the seeds are and uh, it's best tasting tomato and quite one of the earliest one and it gives a lot of uh, sweet um, plum tasting uh, tomato best tomato in the world in my view I planted it every year and it gives a really good result this is some Marzano which is a uh, I've grown it uh, two years ago it was really good though, from an old seed that I bought from the 99p shop uh, it was in a package of many other seeds that was really cheap and I planted it it's so beautiful it looks like we, we took it by mistake for uh, pepper uh, another variety that I'm growing and this is from the again from Italy that's the uh, uh, golden sunrise another variety of tomato which I bought again in Italy is this variety I cannot see the name hold, hold on with me the variety's name is granatita Uh, kind of orange, oh yeah, Ponderosa, 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 and uh, it's kind of orangish uh, yellow tomato. And the last one is a giant uh, San Marzano, it's a big San Marzano, like the other one, but this one is a bigger variety. And as you see, because probably it takes a longer season, these are the ones that I have in this module anyway. These are not all that I'm growing this year, I will have a few more. And I think that I have done another one which I will show now. This is the other variety of tomato that I'm growing. This is was re recommended by uh, a gardener in Ireland who lives near the sea. And she was telling that she has to uh, fight with the cold and the bad weather all the time. And this tomato, because it's a big one, although it's a big tomato, it gives the best result for that short season that she has in the polyton of course she grew it. And I'm doing the same also, called John Bauer. Uh, or John Bear, and uh, I'm growing it this year also. It's a kind of beef steak, large tomato, and I have other seeds which I grow gradually. But these are the ones that you see here. In the hydroponic experiment, at least in the early stages of it, I grow them hydroponically. Then I will plant them in the with the whole sponge. I will plant them in the a uh, bigger pot. pot Tomato pot. variety Sun Gold F1 50 seed I bought it from the CN set last year and second year I'm using it now and now I'm going to plant them individually in this uh, uh, modules pots so they will be ready for when I want to use them to plant them in the polytunnel that is inside the polyton. Yeah. So, tomato sun gold F1. 50 seed cost me, I think, about 10 pounds. Considering that this is the best tomato in the world, that's a good bargain. The seeds look like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 seeds I have here. Uh, I may go and buy again more of this for this season. That's from last year's. So only 13 pots can be done right now. Last year I planted about, I think, 30, 34 of this. I gave a few also to other people. So Okay, now I've planted in these three rows by four, so that is 12, and the 13th one is here. I will go now bring some water and water them. Now I'm watering this, and I fill it to a certain level. The water gradually rises up, and the seed will have the water they need. And that's it.
Tomato variety sun gold F1. The best tomato ever. I have a video about this and uh, I will pr probably put the link below here. Just anybody who wants to see how it tastes. The Hydroponic taste. tomatoes. Out of the 24, only two modules, two plugs have not germinated. The rest of them have germinated. And as you see, they are now grown up, most of them, into the um, first true leaves. The embryonic leaves are these ones, and the true leaves are these ones. And uh, a few of them actually have developed a kind of a stem after having the first true leaves. So, they look alright so far. And I'm looking forward to see how it is doing. The rest of it. Today is 24th of the uh, March 2017. It's Friday. And now I'm going to pot this hydroponic uh, experiment tomatoes. And hoping that they will not be damaged by the cold and frost. We will see how it will go. Okay, I've prepared some uh, pots. Uh, I will not fill it at the moment with the compost. I bring this out and uh, bury them with the stem, some of the stem inside the compost. It gives them a sturdy uh, root system, it will anchor them in the soil, at the same time uh, they will be warm. Okay, as you see, uh, it's easy to pull them out, I just take the, push them from under. I don't just touch the stem or anything, and I will uh, take it from around here and put them in the, one of these pots. As you can see, there is a good root system. Just right the time that uh, the roots were growing out, uh, I decided to pot them. That's a good time for this, before the plants get pot bound. Uh, pot bound being that uh, the uh, root will grow around in this uh, smaller space that was here, and uh, they will not develop roots that they can actually extend to the soil around them. That makes them weak plants if they do. Now I put it inside the pot. I will cover around it some compost. Okay, now I potted the first uh, plant, tomato plant. As you see, most of it, which was this height, up to this height, is now buried under the compost. So that will also root into the compost, develop roots, and uh, gives them a stronger root system. And the whole length of this the whole height of this uh, pot is now the stem of the tomato buried in the compost. I will repeat this for all of the other plants. Uh, almost all the tomatoes are now down and uh, as you see this looks like this uh, at the moment I have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15, 17 and uh, yeah around uh, 22, 23 has remained so I will do the next uh, uh, batches so now we have a 23 plant of tomato and uh, they're potted now. Tomorrow we will have a near one degree feeling temperature. That's about three degrees or four degrees centigrade, but the feel is one degree. So there is a danger of frost. So what I'm going to do is, we are inside the greenhouse, so it is warm here already, uh, relatively of course. So I'm going to put inside another a little enclosure that I have. Okay, I've there. now started to put the tomatoes additional ones into the soil. I've already done a few in, in one month ago into the soil. They're growing and they have now in flower. But these ones are new ones I'm doing them in the polytunnel. And uh, I water them, I dig a hole, I water them, fill up the hole with the water, so pad it in pool, pool. And then, mm, that's it. I cover it with soil. The soccer hose with the timer will uh, feed them gradually just come occasionally to to see how they are doing. I remove any weed that I see, like now what I'm seeing here, weeds, some weeds. 
Um, the good thing is that in this system, the water is where you need. Always you have to keep the water when it is needed, not where uh, uh, watering all the plant or even worse than that, watering the leaves and the foliage of the plant. That is crazy. Don't do that. Water should go to where the plant needs it and that is the roots. So when you keep the near the plant's roots moist, that's it. They go for it and they gradually build up their, their energy. And uh, of course, the, this way they go also strong, develop a strong root systems. What will happen then is that uh, the slug will be discouraged because the soil, look, this lovely soil, lovely manure that I put uh, one month ago, and this is the fresh one I put the other day, yesterday. Uh, look, I found slug egg. It gets dry for them, so practically they will not live here. And they will not be able to thrive here. That's 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 the philosophy. So uh, now I'm going to water them, and then that's it. It's done. I will leave them on their own. What I will do later uh, when you have tomatoes, you will end up definitely with a lot of uh, side shoots like these ones. The side shoots uh, should be removed if you want to grow your plant tall, as it is called in a cordon shape. So one stem it means tall. But if you cut these side shoots, the plants will grow faster, taller, and uh, you will not end up with a cramped space and the lack of ventilation in your tomato plants. So what you will do is to pinch them out. Pinch them out just with your nail, just cut them short. The good thing is that these pinched out parts are, are vigorous. You can, before they get dry, you can just plant them, put them in the, uh, in compost in a little pot. You will have they will root out and then you will end up with a lovely uh, clone of the original plant tomato plants that you have. So I'm doing this with the uh, uh, with my F1 uh, sun gold tomatoes, and that way I will have free plants. That's the best way to have free plants. Actually, it's faster than growing them from the seed. So I'm doing it now. Um, okay, I had some side shoots of the. Uh, From the um, tomato sun gold F1, I'm just now trying to clone them. I use the side shoots, stick them into the compost, and uh, if I had a hormone, I would use it. But I couldn't find my hormone, rooting hormone. I mean, so that's it. That's what I'm doing. I just take them, cut the lower leaves. Actually, whatever injury you cause at this stage, that's really good because the plant tries to heal it and the hormones will be secreted to actually function the process of healing to, to do that. So, I'm doing uh, another one. So, this one also. I've done it last year and it really was good. I gave the plants to other people because uh, I had enough and I reached that stage. But look, I have now three healthy looking plants. Hopefully, God willing, they will catch, uh, they will take, and uh, we will have a, a good tomato plants that can go to the polytunnel. At the moment, uh, I am waiting for more seedlings to, to grow the beyond the three-leaf stage. So after that, uh, they will be planted. I've done almost all the polytunnel, just one side of it, uh, probably about 12 more I can plant. Hallelujah! We have flowers and the tomato in the polytunnel. These are the tomatoes Sun Gold F1, and I'm looking forward for that. Look at this one again, flowering, and those are the cucumbers. We will make a lovely salad, God willing, with these ones. They are lovely. Look at this. Beside the beautiful uh, garlic. Let me go deep into one of these flowers, <coughs> tomato flowers. And look at there. We have the 
larvae of the guess what ladybird oh this allotment is blessed that's great they will eat their feet for us the early program started lovely This is June 15, yeah, sorry, May 15, 2015, 15-5-15, or 5-15-15, as you say in America. And look at this. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, this is a sun gold F1 tomato I planted. When you put your potato uh, tomatoes in the soil, after a while you need that this, uh, you see that. If it is a cordon, a long one that you want, it's not a, one of those bushy ones. So you, they give suckers, they're, they're called side shoots. Uh, you have to remove them because they will take you in the energy. And uh, usually the, the tomatoes there are not very, they, they don't develop as fast as these ones, which are in the main trust. So, and also it makes your plant look bushy. They have a tendency to go bushy. We don't want that because we want to, they go tall because we have a limited space, 60 centimeter within each plant. So they should really go tall, high, and give the tomatoes in a, in a cordon way. So what you have to do is to pinch out this thing, and that process is called pinching out. So all the suckers can be pinched out. If you like, you can plant them separately in a, in a pot, and they will give you again because this practically is cloning so what you will do is uh, you, you are cloning this so I may do a few of these because these are sun gold I love them and uh, see how, how they will do they are hybrid yeah it's difficult to grow from seed and tall so it takes time so I can pinch this now I'm pinching all the side shoots and I'm collecting them as a free plant So that side shoot for this uh, tomato plant is done and as you see it already has one terrace, the second terrace, terrace means the, the level of the foot, the storage, the, the, every level of the foot is called a terrace in the tomatoes. So and you have to keep just on the top of the weeds, there is a few weeds here from the previous, I planted these things one month ago so it has been a while that they are here. And I didn't weed them really, but this you see because the soil is so dry and I water it with this watering system automatically every day, about a, one hour now because it's now hot. Um, the, the soil is dry but the plants are enjoying it so they have enough water. And that's it. Pinching out the side shoots for free plants. And these are the free plants that I have now. I, will, I can just, it's a hybrid, it's a sun gold F1. F1 means a Fearly one or four, whatever. It means the second generation, first generation. Sorry, and uh, that means is a hybrid. I can I can plant it separately without the need for the seed. I plant it in a pot. Then when they're big enough, I just put them in the. So. First tomato fruits of the 2015. This is the variety. Sun Gold F1 is a hybrid. This is the tastiest tomato in my opinion in the world I love it and now it is in fruit oh I'm waiting for tasting this it is the most beautiful that is in the polytunnel and this is the first truss the second truss is this Uh, this is a um, tomato variety F sun gold F1. Now I'm going to taste one of these. This is the way it looks. Now I'm going to taste it. Mmm, I cannot believe it, <laughs> it's not a tomato, it's plum, 
it tastes like plum. It's sweet, slightly sour, and it's lovely. I'm going to taste another one of this one, which has a split in it. It has cracked, as you see. Now taste now. Oh, it's so sweet. It's not a tomato, as I say. It's not a tomato. It's the best tomato in the world. It tastes like a proper plum should taste. Oh my God. That's a good tomato. This is inside my polytunnel with tomatoes. It's about 50 tomato plants probably here. And uh, different varieties, sun gold, firecracker, uh, indigo rose, uh, money maker, uh, San Marino or Mar San Marzano, something Italian names anyway. And uh, some other varieties. Why well, I'm growing them? Why we grow tomatoes in the allotment? Why we don't go and buy it? Of course you can go and buy. When we run out of tomato, we definitely buy. We even buy sometimes some cans. Uh, um, tomato, skin tomato or the puree of it. But why we grow, bother to grow tomatoes? All this investment, all the things. Okay. One part of it is just uh, we are gardeners. We like uh, our hobby. We want to do something. That is our hobby, and we enjoy it. Another part of it is that the tomato varieties that we grow, you don't find them in the shops. I've not seen anywhere selling tomatoes as sweet as the Sangol Defan. Sangol Defan, never seen it in the shops or in supermarkets. So I grow it myself, I enjoy it myself, my family enjoys I give it to my friends. When I have the plants, I give it for free to the friends also. Sometimes I keep the side shoots and uh, put them just in the compost, like I did several more times this year. Pass it to my friends, uh, introducing them to this new tomato for me. And I give them also a few tomatoes when they're ready, just to help them to decide and taste. What is better than that? And, uh, yeah. The tomatoes that I, I will grow and I know that I will not find it anywhere else. Why I'm doing it? I like gardening. Gardening is a hobby for me. Also, it's something that gives me uh, some food. The whole point of the allotment movement is that you grow your own food. Having the satisfaction of growing your own food. So sun gold is fun, nobody grows it, you cannot buy it in the shops, that's the reason I grow. This is the beauty of the allotment life. You do something you enjoy and you get a reward. And what is a better reward than having a good food?
the glorious allotment, the glory of nature, the glory of growing your own food in this big universe. A few days I was not collecting the cucumbers and look what happened. Look at here. Anyway, I'm going out to harvest some of them at least, otherwise the plant will stop. And we had that lovely, we have harvested that lovely Sun Gold F1 tomato. Oh, the best tasting tomato ever. Oh God, you have to try it. It's such a little tomato. This variety, it's such a Susan, is called the Indigo Rose. I think I saw a few ones which are ready to harvest here. I think this one. That's red. It's gone red on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So, indigo rose. I think this one is maybe. Yes, this one's gone red. And uh, there's one thing that the viewers should pay note. Uh -huh. Is that you can see we don't have any red tomatoes. Uh -huh. And there's a reason for that. I will, I, we will have, but not yet. because We've got not some. Yet. But we noticed through experience that these golden tomatoes are more resistant to blight. Mm. When our polytunnel got infected with blight, we noticed that these didn't. Mm. They didn't. The other ones we had to pull up, Absolutely. these ones were still growing. So they do have some resistance. I'm not saying total, but in our experience, and also they, they're sweeter, it seems They're to me. sweeter, they're just as easy to grow. And the sides are small so they don't fall off the vine. They don't drop off. Mm -hmm. Very few do. They, you can pick them. I don't do like the shops and just pick the whole vine together. Yeah? You pick them. That is actually a, it's, it's very unusual that they can pick the whole tomato vine. When actually they don't come at the same time, how they do? What trick they play um, in that? They're selectively grown for that, and they're not grown in normal. Look, you're treading on a tomato. Oh, sorry. And they're not grown naturally. They grow in just suspended, and the roots dangled in nutrients and water. They don't have the the environment natural environment and of course the ones on the um, top of the vine it's always riper than the ones on the bottom so when you do buy vine tomatoes you'll find that the ones on the top will be more ripe and they'll go rotten soon okay thank you susan you see this is a different variety it's kind of pear shaped palm shaped something like a plum well, that's news to me because here. I thought these were peppers, which they are. <laughs> and no, no, one. that's not pepper. That's a pepper. Is that a tomato? That's a tomato. Well, it's right. <laughs> no, I did. I think it's that fair, was a tomato. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. And another thing that I could I point out for the viewers. I think that is not very ripe, but anyway. When tomatoes are, are overripe, they don't go rotten, they don't go mouldy, they don't mould, they don't rot like the shop pork ones. They split like this. Uh -huh. That is a ripe tomato, it split. That's the first sign that they are on the turn. So here we go. Oh, you're eating it. I've given it a Viking funeral. <laughs> the Viking's funeral. <laughs> okay, um, I have to... Okay, you continue, you continue to harvest, I will just follow you. <laughs> this side, uh, uh, I, I don't think this side is, are yet ready yet. No, yeah, these no, are. No, 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 are. these are yeah, not. These are, yeah. Yes, you are they picking the unripe one. Because these are, uh, let me tell you why, why. Because I planted them after those ones. So these ones are behind in the I season. The so you have to start on that side. That uh, hand that is the ants helping me. Oh, it's okay. another one. He said they weren't ripe. No, 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 they are not right because this I planted them. Right. Said, look that side. It split. Here, I can tell you these ones are ripe. Those, yeah, there is a one year orange one there, which is ripe. Oh, not there, here, here, here in front of your feet. It's like this. It's in front of your feet. Where? Uh huh. 
He's like this when I'm driving in the car. Okay, here. He's a backseat driver and a backseat gardener. <laughs> You're just uh, being trying to be cheeky now. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I'm sure we're not the only ones. You are enjoying the fruit of my labour. I certainly am. <laughs> Another one that That's needs lovely. to be disposed of. Oh, give it to no, me, disposed oh, of. I will dispose see? it in my stomach. He took the bread out of my mouth. Okay. Let's have a look down here. These are falling. Oh, there's one. Yeah, I see falling it. There. Yeah. There's a few under your hand just there. Oh no, I see them here. No, no, those ones are not ready yet. Yeah. They are not orange yet. This is an orange one, look. Um, I think these ones can stay a little bit longer. But I think this side has a lot more to offer. Do you need a pony? No, I need not a pony. Oh, look. One each. We can't waste them, they okay, don't... give it to me because my hand is all busy. Feed me. <laughs> oh, God. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look what our sounds. Oh, blueberry. Ladies and gentlemen. Mmm, lovely. I've got that off. Okay, I'm now stopping the top of the plants to don't let them grow beyond a certain point. I may have some side shoots let it grow, but uh, at this moment I don't want the tops. Especially since they hit the a little bit wet roof of the Don't like that, they may get blight. Yeah, I'm stopping the plant. I'm gonna let a few side shoots just to grow here and there. So another alternative coming up. So because I've stopped this at, the, at this level of the height, it's about two meters. But the side shoot will, will have the prospect of fruiting again. So I will keep them. They say in the book that don't do it. But uh, I want to give it a go this year, just to see how, how is the effect. I found some. Oh, uh, here. I can point it to you here. No, look. Here. Oh, wow, well, look. Here. Oh, here, look. Look at this. Another broken one. Eat it, right? Okay. Because I'm going to eat mine. Oh, yummy. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a reason why. They ripen on the top of the vine first. And it doesn't need a rocket scientist to work that one out. It's simply because the nutrients go to the ones that are first. Mm -hmm. All the nutrients and everything, actually, the yeah, water. The older ones. Yeah. So they grow first and then, and this is different to the the um, cultivated ones in Mark, you know, the big producers. These don't have artificial sunlight. They don't have lamps that turn on and off. They don't have all this irrigation and uh, you no know, soil thing, this thing they use now, technology. So I think you've got more osmosis through the, the uh, cells. You've got this osmosis going on 
uh, extracellularly and, and no, that side is food. Right? You're picking the wrong ones. And um, they are not right. Yeah, pieces. Okay. They're greenish Where? yet. If you go that side, you will find right ones. Well, I see. Here. It's more natural. Just pick the ripe ones. You don't need to pick the unripe ones. Yeah, it's, yeah. See, so it's the ones which are orange are ripe. I know the ones which are orange. The other ones are not as sweet, so... I've just... I've them. been trying to explain to the viewers why this happens. Yeah, I know. Thank you for the information. And, uh, You've got natural... Yeah. ...rhythm. Pick this. These are the ones which are so easy when they're ripe. Just break from this joint. I think we need another pan. Eh? Okay, open this over to it there. Eh? There's enough broken there. Now, for the lady viewers, you like to pick their curvy figures. Tomatoes are very low in calories. An average size tomato, which are the average size red ones that you buy in the shop, are never about 20 calories. And these little ones would only have mm, 10, 5, 10 calories. And they're very nutritious. So you can eat a hell of a lot. Yeah, if you're craving for eating. Yeah, I love tomatoes. I'm in tomato heaven here. That one is not right. Too late. The green. Don't pick the green ones. There is one behind you which is orange. Don't Leave them, them too when they are ripe. ripe because then no, they no, they, they, if they're ripe, they're better. Even if they're splitting, they taste better. They're sweeter. But then you have to eat them quicker. That's all right. Ripen, then. Yeah. I don't like green ones because they're a little bit acidic. They're a little bit tan also. Tan in them is too high. This one is. And surprisingly, these trees up, I'm showing here, some of them are from seeds, but some of them are from the... I took uh, side shoots from here, these plants, I put them in a pot and planted them as a new plant. So practically I did a cloning. That was wonderful. Oh, that is split, this one. Yes, well, you can get it. You can. Okay. I've just seen um, a vine that's right into it over there. I, I it. see a vine there. Huh? Yeah. Right. Okay, when you're you close know. to them, it's difficult to see. Yeah, you, sometimes you have to view them at different angles. I remember Rick Van Man, whenever he was entering in summer, his polytunnel, he had to shake the plastic because there were a rain of <laughs> condensation coming down. Uh, oh, he, he didn't actually bow the best. The best was for him to get the plastic, which is the anti-condensation. I got that one and I'm really happy with what I did. But that means I will not have a problem like that. Oh, you missed this. There is one here oh, which yes. is ripe. I thought maybe that might be a bit too green for you. No, that one was all right. This one is okay, already... Okay. And when you leave the slightly green ones, you will have something to pick next day. So, it's good in a way. Because you will eat the ones that you already have, and then the ones that will come next day are ready for you. You will have all the time fresh.
Is this tomato heaven? Well, tomato. it's not. I mean, in the past, such a thing would be uh, only in the uh, means of very rich people to have a, uh, as they called it, a greenhouse or whatever, glass house, or we can call this plastic house, for their kitchen garden. We have it into Walmer Castle in the Dover. And uh, I was really impressed how the, everything was there. Of course, Darwin House has such a thing also, but anyway. Walmer Castle, beautiful place. With a lovely kitchen garden. Oh, I found one here. Oh, one tomato here. A red one? Yeah. Aha! I think this yeah. is a different variety. Would be, yeah, it's red. Uh, show me, show me again. Different colour. And the leaves look slightly different. Yeah, the leaves are a bit smaller. They do, they look slightly different, so... Um... Right, then. And look at the shape of the wine. The wine is like a Y, letter Y. Oh, the sign, symbol of peace. This is a hippie tree, <laughs> hippie oh, yeah. tomato. Look, it sounds flower. like that. Is one like that coming down, then going like that? The only thing is there is circle. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it reminds me of the 1970s. Show me how many you have now. Okay, one punnet. I've got one punnet. There's a couple split, but we'll eat them straight away tonight. So they won't go rotten. I mean, they stay in the fridge a couple of days if they split. It's just a clean split. They, uh, and two. Three. So we've got. Oh, okay. We've got. Two punnets of the sun gold and uh, another variety yeah, if you don't know the red one. Two punnets of the sun gold. We've got the uh, firecracker fire and we've got this really little mixture. Of we've the got those ones. Indigo what rose. Is, indigo rose. The fi um, That's one probably San Marzano this is, or Marzano. This is the one we don't know. It looks yeah, like a red, red pepper. Brown. It's the size of a small pepper. <laughs> I thought he was growing peppers in here. Oh, we have pepper. And those, uh, and that's my tea for tonight. Mm. My Sunday salad. I will be having. Okay, I just left my wife for half an hour and she picked all these uh, tomatoes from the Politano. Probably this is about, yeah, four kilos of tomato. And uh, I can say that every little pun at least uh, half of this will be in a supermarket if you buy it. Not as full as deep or as deep as this. And that is three pound there, so this is about five pound, and the rest of it, probably I, I'm talking about uh, fifteen pound of tomato here, value wise. And this is I don't know nth time that I'm collecting these tomatoes from the Politano. Uh, probably up to now I've collected about one hundred pound of tomato from the Politano, and given also to friends and uh, uh, anybody who, who was interested. Beside that, I got a lot of side shoots from them and just planted them as new plants, cloning them. So I paid about, I think, five or six or seven pounds for some gold left one tomato, these little ones, and uh, three pounds for this tomato as a plant. The rest of it was seed. So he's well paid for it already, and yet the Politano has things to go on. So this is really good value for money, you know, even buying the Expensive uh, F1 uh, seeds from CN seeds, for example. These are from CN seeds about F1, Sun Gold F1. They're really sweet. They're plums of the tomatoes, I'm telling you. You have to try to know what, what I mean. And yet it is value for money. 100 pounds of tomato already have collected with all these things. And yet it is continuing, God willing. And they're really good value for money. Great. Mmm. Oh, also flower. Mm, beautiful, smelly. Uh, 
uh, to cut a few leaves, then blight appeared. And I know the reason now. I had to cut this branch stem and the moisture from this dripping down and affecting the lower leaves and the stems and that is blight. I have to remove this plant. It's finished before it's too late. That's the sap from the tomato plant causing the moisture on the stem and the moisture in the stem brings blight. Uh, okay, this is a video about the tasting of uh, four varieties of tomato that we grow in the allotment. This one is the Marzano tomato. This one is the Sun Gold F1. This is the Firecracker. Another F1. This is a um, uh, yeah, indigo rose, a variety derived from the Russian black. So I'm going out to taste them. I will cut them and taste. Or actually I will go like that. I don't need to even to cut. Oh no, it's better to cut it just to see how it is inside. Okay, uh, I've now cut the tomatoes. This is the Marzano tomato. It's the biggest in this range. It's the first time I'm harvesting this, so let us see how it tastes. Mm. Quite mealy and fleshy. Kind of sweet, not very acidic. A little bit acid, but um, yeah, pleasant, not bad. It's very tomatoey. Very juicy also. A slightly salty. Mm. Okay. Now I go for the indigo rose. This is the variety derived from the Russian black. If I understand correctly. Looks like a scary movie character. Anyway, I'm not going to taste it. Hmm. Oh, but quite juicy. Mm. Sweet, a little bit acid, very slightly acid. Compared to this one, this is a little bit more bland. Now I'm going for the Firecracker F1. This is the way the skin looks. Oh, more acidic than the previous two. Mm. Nicer in a way. And now I'm going to taste this one, which is the Sun Gold F one. Foxes are outside making noise. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, sweet. This is the best tomato. This little one. <laughs> it's so sweet. Oh. It's not a tomato, it's a plum. <laughs> I always say that. That's my catchphrase. This is not a tomato, this is a plum. Mmm. <laughs> Uh, one hour ago, right from the allotment, 
always is some tomatoes. I was just wanted, I just wanted to talk about this. Um, this is a tomato that we harvested, some old F1. Uh, <laughs> if you want to know what is a, if you make a jam into a soup, how it will look, that is it. What we did was just uh, putting uh, the tomatoes with this slightly, uh, a little bit of the olive oil, just a tiny bit, just to stop them burning in a pan, in a frying pan. Then uh, putting the heat on and uh, on the oven, on the oven, and then it just boils on its own juice, and the result is this delicious soup-like. Uh, food is is not just soup. I'm telling you, some gold F1 is it this without any added sugar. It is a jam. If you marry a jam to a soup, that is this food. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I love it. That's the rest of the food we are eating. Okay. The frost season has started. Yesterday we, we went and harvested the rest of our uh, tomatoes from Polisano. Whatever was here, whatever was here, uh, we put it uh, in a, it was mushy almost a little bit, uh, very soft because of the frost. Uh, we boiled it, mixed it with a little bit of onion and just that. And then now it is cooling down, we put it in this uh, kilner jar to keep it for immediate use so we can use it whenever we want. I'm telling you this is yummy with a little bit of onion, oh that's we, we just boiled it with a little bit of onion. It's really beautiful. Yeah, you can add anything you like. You can add uh, herbs, greens, uh, I mean basil and uh, all kinds of things that you like, dried ones or fresh. You can add even garlic. Garlic is an ingredient that is has in most of the processed food. It gives them the, uh, the nicest smell. Otherwise, meaty, especially meaty foods, processed meats. A really horrible smelling. Without the garlic, they cannot be sold even. So, yeah, good use of the uh, our tomato. These are all the beautiful. Uh, yeah, what is that called? I forgot that. <laughs> our own tomato. <laughs> yeah, that sweet tomato that I have. Anyway, and uh, yeah, we'll be ready. We will be eating it, enjoying it. Today is the 23rd of the November 2015. And we have yet some tomatoes. And the last one we have used it in here. And the tomatoes of the 2014, which had in summer 2014, are continuing to provide us with the vitamin C, even into the 2015. Today is the 18th of January 2015. Is it yet giving us...